This is the Look Back Wrestling Show, and I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Look Back Wrestling Show. I'm your host, Ali Zaka, and Raw and SmackDown opens up with a tribute to Bruno San Martino, one of the greatest champions in wrestling history. Uh, he passed away... Um, over the past weekend, they did a tribute to him, which is good for them. And a moment of silence as well. All right, so let's jump into the Raw recap. So Raw opens up with none other than Brock and Paul Heyman. Brock and Paul Heyman coming out. It's the same spiel, and it's, it's the same Paul Heyman stick. Brock Lesnar stands there, looks tough. Paul talks about Brock, talks about how he's going to beat up Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns comes out, they go back and forth. It's just another Brock and... Roman and Paul segment. They were already building up the greatest world Roman is going to be happening this Friday. So that's what's going on here. Elias Sampson's out. He's in the ring and he decides to sing a song. As he's preparing for his song and everything and started to sing, he gets interrupted by none other than the glorious one, Bobby Roode. They have a match. They go back and forth. Very long match with Elias getting a roll-up victory on Bobby. So not a good start to Bobby Roode on Raw, but looking strong for Elias. Next, you get a tag team match. Woken Mike Hardy and Bray Wyatt, the Woken Alliance, as I call them, they face off against the Ascension. One of the premier like tag teams in NXT years ago, who are just a comedy team now, and they get beaten. The Ascension get beaten by the Woken Alliance. Then we get the Sami Zayn and KO Show, or as now known as Sami and KO Show, who are now filling that spot that The Miz left on Raw. So it's like the new show on Raw. And the first guest is none other than Kurt Angle. Now, what I found funny about this is that they have posters up, like sitting there in the ring, and one of the posters is a is Shane O'Mac getting dragged by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And I'm like, why do they have that up? And then the Raw general manager sitting in a lawn chair right next to like this poster anyway sammy and ko started beef with kurt angle kurt angle's like there's a lot of people who want to beat you guys up and i'm putting, putting you guys in the match tonight so y'all want to talk trash if you match against Braun Strowman and bobby lashley so ko and sammy got faced Braun Strowman and bobby lashley well, there's a few backstage things throughout the night one of them that i really enjoyed was the miss Rod trying to join Seth Rollins and create the new shield. And then later, after Seth Rollins said a hard no, they tried to do the same thing with Finn Balor and create a new club. And I just thought it was kind of funny. But anyway, I'm going to just jump to that segment. The Mistrage faced off against Finn Balor and Seth Rollins in a tag team match. There was a lot of tag team matches on Raw. But they faced off against each other with Seth Rollins and Balor winning. Before that match, let's go back to Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, who actually the needle scratch thing actually worked this time because Drew McIntyre came out first and the needle scratch and then Dolph Ziggler. But those who face off against Titus Worldwide and they beat Titus Worldwide. So there's like a new tag team division growing on Raw. You're starting to see these new teams appearing up left and right. You also get Jinder Mahal versus Chad Gable. This happened because of a backstage segment where Chad ran to Kurt Angle asking how Jason Jordan's doing. And Jinder comes up, kind of interrupting them. They get into a match, and Chad Gable gets the victory. He, he ended up surprise roll-up victory on Jinder Mahal. So Jinder has two losses on Raw, but Chad Gable's looking strong. And I'm glad to get in, give Chad a push. He's really good. Let him do some work. Also, Chad has his old theme song now. We get KO and Sami Zayn versus Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman get the hot tag in. They pretty much beat up KO and they pretty much beat up KO and uh, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn got the brunt of everything. He got destroyed by Braun Strowman, destroyed by Bobby Lashley, then get destroyed by Braun Strowman again. And just like, good lord. No Way Jose versus Baron Corbin. Which end up not being a match because Baron's like, I'm not going to come out and face you, No Way Jose. You're up here dancing around. I'm here to win and take things seriously. You're dancing. And as Baron Corbin left, No Way Jose was like, okay, well, let the party go on. So he's back with the Congo line. They're walking up. They walk out. And No Way Jose's on stage dancing. As he's dancing on stage, he gets clocked in the back of the head by no other than Baron Corbin, who lays him out. And I'm like, yes, this is what I want to see. Baron Corbin versus No Way Jose. Two hard-hitting wrestlers. And two different styles. So hopefully this is a good, you know, rival. 
And the last match of the night is the Riot Squad with Mickey James, Alexa Bliss versus Amber, Nia, Sasha, Bailey, and Natalia. So Natalia's a face now on Raw. But anyway, this match comes down to a very key point where Natalia gets hit in the leg. She gets chop blocked by Sarah Logan. And I thought Natalia was injured. She played it off so well. Like she looked like she was really hurt. And Chaos ensues, all the women get knocked out, but nobody's like counted out. Mickey James come back into the ring and she sees Natalia like getting helped by the referees, kicks Natalia down, and out comes Ronda Rousey who try to like help out Natalia. Then Mickey kicks Ronda and like, go back, get out of here, Ronda. We don't need you, we don't want you. Ronda comes into the ring and like pretty much handles business to take care of Mickey, put her in the arm bar and makes her tap, which the referee didn't ring the bell. Like, wait, so nobody got taken out by a 10 count? Like, that's it? Like, Ronda Rousey comes in, so the heels get the victory, but Ronda Rousey stands tall at the end of the night. So that's raw for you. SmackDown opens up with, as I said earlier, the Bruno San Martino tribute. And then you get The Miz come out. Miz TV is on SmackDown. And he comes out. He cuts a heel promo. Then in the middle of his heel promo, he starts to turn face when he says he realized he has a daughter. And all the hatred he has for Daniel Bryan no longer exists. He's like, there's nothing else matters but his daughter. And he calls out Daniel Bryan so he can, like, squash their beef. He's like, Daniel, want to punch your face? Come on out here. But Daniel never makes it out. Who makes it out is Big Cass, who is seven feet tall and you can't. Teach that. Which is something he did say. He like, I'm seven foot tall. And then the crowd goes, you can't teach that. But anyway, so Big Cass come out and says, like, he's, she be the person everybody's talking about. He should be the guy. And he actually cuts a really great promo. Like, Big Cass, when he first came in to WWE and when he was with Enzo More on Raw, his promo skills wasn't that great. He was struggling. You can see he was still trying to get into the groove of it, of speaking in front of a large crowd and, and the, you know, the nerves behind that. Now he doesn't have those nerves. Now he's completely comfortable just talking to get This promo he cut was really good. So props to Big Cass. I'm excited now. He reminds me of an edge for some reason, like a younger edge. I don't know why. Maybe it's a face. But he said he's educated, tall, and like... Yes, good promo, good promo. So, the Miz kind of just sat there, like he stood up to Big Cass, but Big Cass was tiring over him, Miz kind of like backed off, but it, it's, it's I I like that promo. I like I like this segment. As Becky Lynch and Oscar was heading towards the ring, they end up seeing a pass out Daniel Bryan, and they went to go try to help on him, but the ref was already sitting there helping him, so they told Becky and Oscar to go on. Oscar and Becky goes, goes off to face no other than the Iconics who cut another great promo in the ring. Just, just good promos making fun of Becky Lynch, like it, and Oscar. It just, it's great. It's great. They're great. Give them make a tag team division, please. But the match comes down to Becky Lynch and Oscar bumping into each other because Becky got pushed by Peyton into Oscar. This allowed Peyton to pretty much. Like, just get the distracted Bailey discom discombobulated, allowing Bailey to get a distraction on Bailey. Bailey. Allow Billy to get a distraction on Becky, and Peyton was able to get the roll up, so the icon is still a victory pretty much from Asuka and Becky Lynch. So, Asuka has lost two matches now. Dang. In a row. But it was, she didn't get pinned, though, but dang. That's not good. Do you get an AJ Styles and Renee Young segment where AJ is talking about he excited to face Sinsuke and Rusev Day and he has a team that is going to be too sweet? Yeah, I just said that. Then we get another segment with Naomi and the Usos where Naomi is talking to her husband, Jimmy, and saying, like, don't try to face off with the Bludgeon Brothers. Don't get yourself hurt. And Jimmy's like, hey, I got this. It's okay. Everything's okay. And it's like husband and wife talking to each other. I like this segment. It's kind of cool. Kind of cheesy, but kind of cool at the same time. Then we get Jimmy Uso versus Eric Rowan. And pretty much this match comes down to, like, Jimmy getting destroyed. But then they get distracted. The Bludgeon Brothers get distracted by Naomi, who comes out, does her whole interest thing and everything. This allows the Usos to capitalize and get the victory on the Bludgeon Brothers. So they stand tall before the Greatest Royal Rumble. Then you get the Carmella and Charlotte contract si signing for the women's title. 
Carmella comes out, she gets introduced by Renee Young, and she pretty much brags about herself, shows her whole promo package again. Try to do it twice, but Charlotte comes out and interrupts. Finally comes down to two, finally signing her, signing her contract. Charlotte woos in Carmella's face. Carmella puts the title in Charlotte's face. Charlotte grabs Carmella, smacks her head against the table, and flips the table up on her, and just like, that's all she did. She didn't say anything, she wooed and walked on out. You get another backstage segment, which is not really much importance. And then we get Shelton Benjamin, who's ready to face off against Jeff Hardy. But Jeff Hardy comes to the ring, pauses when he hears music stop. Like, and we're halfway to the entrance, super pause, like really too long. And then Randy Orton comes out and walks past Jeff, doesn't acknowledge him at all. And Randy Orton and, and Shelton Benjamin get into a match. Jeff Hardy sitting at ringside. Sunil Singh comes out, attacks Jeff Hardy, and then try to mess with Randy. Randy RKO's him. This allows Shelton Benjamin to capitalize, get the victory on Randy Orton. So I'm like, yes, Shelton finally winning. You know, it's dirty. I don't care. But why is Sunil on, on SmackDown? For what reason? What reason? We get a few more backstage segments. We get a Daniel Bryan segment. We get AJ in the club segment. In the bar in the New Day segment. It doesn't really, really matter which goes on in these segments. You can go back and watch it if you feel like it. Not really that important. Finally, we get the club in AJ Styles versus Nakamura and Rusev Day. Nakamura has a new theme song. Pretty much it's his theme song with a little bit of a rock addition to it and a guy singing. So it's with lyrics now. And AJ Styles started the match off, and he was the one getting beat down my during the match. He get the hot tag with Luke Gallows, who's cleaning the house. He think Luke's up to win this all, but Nakamura finally gets in uh, and gets the distraction off the Rusev off Rusev Day. So Rusev Day gets taken care of. Gallows kind of distracted, and he gets hit in the leg by Nakamura. Then gets a Ken Saka to the back of the head. Nakamura pins him one, two, three. So he stands tall. And then AJ comes out nowhere, start attacking Nakamura. Nakamura low blows him again for like the fourth straight week, maybe. Third straight week. I don't know. He just keep getting low blowed like every week. At this point, it's like I'm just like, okay, we're seeing this every week now. But anyway, he gets low blow. And as he's in the corner trying to recover, AJ's in the corner trying to recover. Nakamura's about to get ready to hit him with a Ken Sasa. Carl Anderson comes in with a save, gets a Ken Sasa to his face, knocks him out. And then... Sinsuke sets up Carl again for another Kinsasa, makes AJ watch it, and just knocks him out. And he stands tall. AJ trying to attend to his friend. And Nakamura is like, just once again, please, please as punch. Please as punch. And that's SmackDown. What do you guys think of this week's Raw and SmackDown? How do you feel about certain storylines? And what about the Greatest Warrior Rumble? Are you going to watch it? Unfortunately, I won't be able to, so I'm, there won't be a review on that. And also, there might not be a, re, a recap next week. Just giving you guys a heads up. But thank you guys for watching this episode of the Look Back Wrestling Show. See you guys next time. Keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment in the comment section below, and please subscribe for more episodes of Grind Towards Success movie breakdowns, or whatever it is you're watching on my channel. I have different stuff from interviews to other movie reviews to wrestling reviews. If you're a wrestling fan, please, please subscribe. If you want to see all that and see what's going on. Also, you can follow me on Snapchat here. Follow me on Instagram there to see what I'm doing in my personal life as well as my business and Ninja Warrior. And lastly, you can watch the last episode of Grind Torch Success here, and you can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns there. Thank you guys once again. I really appreciate it. See you next time. Keep being awesome.